what's going on? How's it hanging? How's it happening? You guys know this is Kevin from the Chord Progression Podcast. Everybody, it is Thursday. It is the 26th of May. Yeah, we're coming towards the end of the month, and this podcast episode is the perfect one to lead into the weekend because it is fun. It is crazy. We talk about pirates, gin, and crazy good music. But before we get started, I want to thank our sponsors. First, we have Phoenix Fitness. Yeah, we know we're Memorial Day weekend. You know, summer is right here. It's festival season right here. You're going to want to be able to go to all these different music festivals and, well, last for a good number of days. You're not going to want to just, like, give out because you don't have the energy. You're not strong enough, that kind of thing. So I know you might be hitting the gym, you know, achieving all those fitness goals that you want, lifting, right? you know, cardio wise, whatever it might be. But one of the most important things to do is prepare and recover right so that your body is ready to go the next day. That's where Phoenix Fitness comes in with many great supplements to help you do that. Different pre-workouts, both stim and stim-free stuff. Uh, b up recovery compounds that help you absorb nutrients in your muscles following a workout. Creatine help you build muscle. Protein help you build muscle with different blends for your morning, nighttime, to get your workout, or if you like collagen blends, or plant-based blends, multivitamins, really anything you might need to achieve your fitness goals, Phoenix Fitness has for you. So our listeners get 15% off. Use the code MSOT to FNXFit.com. Link description of the podcast at Phoenix Fitness. Our second sponsor is Custom Debuts. And what Custom Debuts does is they make you the coolest cat on the block because you get your very own custom music poster with whatever you want in music. So here's what you do. You go to their website and you give them a band. Let's go with caskets. You either put in an album like Lost Souls or a song like Falling Apart and they'll create a custom poster for you based off of that information. You can have your own custom, you know, Lost Souls poster based off of the artwork or the track listing or your own custom Falling Apart uh, poster based off of the music video that they did, based off of the concept of it, based off the lyrics, whatever it might be. And once you you know, you submit that stuff, they'll come back to the design in 48 hours. If you don't like that, you tell them what to change, what you want on there, and bing, bang, boom, they'll make it happen for you. Once you're satisfied, you get another sent to you on poster paper, canvas, or an aluminum freaking science. When I say you'd be the coolest cat out there, you'd be the coolest cat out there in your office, in the garage, in your house, in your basement, in your dorm room, in your apartment, whatever it might be to be like, hey, who got that cool custom poster? <laughs> Me, it's only one. Custom debuts, bitch. So our listeners get 10% of the code CPP10 at checkout link description of the podcast and along with the promo code we are also sponsoring the when we were hungry festival happening in vegas on october 20th and 21st turn memes into dreams pancakes in the pit yo multiple bands have been on the podcast are appearing on that festival including the founders of modern day escape yep modern day escape they're the ones that will william once found it boom yep he's been on the podcast twice along came a spider boom had been on the podcast outlier one of my favorite guests of all time boom on the podcast saving vice Boom, on the podcast. You're not going to want to miss out with it. Moshes me in the pit, pancakes in the pit. Let's go. Website description of the podcast. You to check all of that out. Now on our future presentation. So when I said pirates, gin, and crazy manic good music, that's the perfect way to describe my conversation with Simon and Matt from the band Raptors. They're from Bristol in the United Kingdom. They fuse like rock, metal, punk, and hardcore all at the same time. There's so much going on here. You're not going to find a song on this album that's going to sound like a different one on the album. There's so much going on here. Our conversation is great. You're going to want to find out about this band because their brand new LP, Living Without Death's Permission, comes out on June 24th. So what better way to get ready for it than with us right here in the Chord Progression Podcast. Are you guys ready? Because I sure as fuck am. Let's go! Yeah. Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners of the Chord Progression Podcast. One thing I've been getting into is a lot more bands from over in the UK. I mean, we've had caskets on the podcast. I might end up having holy apps on the podcast sometime soon, but this one came across my way and I looked at the style. It was like rock, metal, punk, hardcore blended all into one. And I'm like, I like all of those things. So let's jump in. Let's listen to it. And this band is a brand new LP coming out on June 24th called Living Without Death's Permission. And once at, once this podcast is over with, go check out the singles. You're going to want to pre-save it, pre-order it, pre-dial everything like that. Like, get into this band. Trust about that. You're going to have a lot of fun. So, all the way from the UK, please welcome Simon and Matt from the band Raptors to the podcast. So, gentlemen, welcome to the Core Progression Podcast. Yeah, Hello, yeah, yeah. Man, man. Thanks for having us, Steve. Thanks for having us. Thanks for being on, guys. How's everything going over there in the UK nowadays? I mean, it, it, like we got live shows back. Everything seems to be rolling just fine. You guys got the new LP ready to release at the end of June. So how's everything been going on your end? Life is good, man. Everything's getting back to the way it should be. You're yeah. feeling almost normal again. Yeah, it's all go, man. It's all going. We love it. Mm-hmm. 
it's been o- opened back up and yeah it's it's fucking foot straight straight on the metal again so it's yeah it's feeling it's feeling pretty damn good right now that is fantastic here especially after the past two years of what we all went through it's like is live music coming back and then it comes back and it's just like all right everyone's going full force into it we're not stopping it's we missed this for like a year year and a half let's just you know not take it for granted and if you're like me probably overdo it <laughs> <laughs> that's yes, it yeah, man absolutely yeah it's from every angle it's just it's it's so nice to see and everyone is just in the same boat and everyone's got that fire under their ass and uh, yeah it's just it's good to see everyone flying back onto the road oh absolutely have you guys been seeing a lot of that over where you are over in the uk a lot more just energy especially around people going back out again live music just everything around there what have you guys been seeing around that I think I think you hit the nail on the head, man. With not taking it for granted, I think that's it. People are excited to see it again and have missed it for so long. Now it's back. It's yeah, yeah. I think I think everyone had that like uh, penny drop in during lockdown at some point of just like, oh, it's such a huge part of people's lives that you when it's there. Like and beforehand, and there's never ever, ever been any threat of it being taken away. Everyone just kind of thinks it's kind of normal, yeah. but when it's completely taken away, pe- people were just going out of their minds, being like, "What? Why do I feel like this?" And it's like you've not had that noise, that level of like so many people on the same wavelength because it's, it's not yeah. just about the music it's about like the community vibe as well it's like everyone in the same boat everyone vibing with each other so it's 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 yeah it's a form of therapy so it's it's uh something that everyone's kind of uh yeah witnessing again and uh yeah it's it's lush to feel everyone's energy and the fact that you guys are seeing that happen over where you are, I'm seeing that happen over where I am, that just means that that's happening all across the world once again, where we're not taking anything of this for granted. We know what it was like to lose out on something that we consider to be the one of the most important things in our lives, whether it's, you know, how, you know, you guys going up there making music, playing music, you know, connecting with everybody in that way. Us in the crowd just going there feeling like this family that we have, like we're finally able to hang out with them, see them again, connect on such a positive thing where it doesn't matter where you come from, who you are, what you do. None of that freaking matters. All that matters is you're in that room, you're connecting with the music in a positive way along with the rest of us. So we missed out on that for so long. We lost a lot of that. It's being able to connect once again like that is just such an important thing. And I'm just happy to hear that over in the UK, it's the exact same way where people are just amped up for it, ready to roll. And just every time there's a show out, it's just like, <gasps> take my money. Just, just take it. I need to go. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah, it's awesome to see, man. It's it like, we live on a street and there's venues up and down the street and there's stuff like all, all going on like every night, even like our, our local pub, which is like literally just a stone throw from our house here. Um, and they just mainly just do food and beer, but they have the odd like, live band on and it's rammed like yeah. every night every they, time, they've yeah. never seen anything like it yeah. so it's 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 people are just loving it man it's such a good vibe shoot man i'm gonna have to come over to the uk i wanted to come over to the uk ever since i last came over to europe i'm like i gotta make it over there somewhat of course the pandemic kind of derailed those plans but i mean you guys are already just like making a case where it's like okay gotta find a way to scrape together any kind of money i can hop on a plane come over to the uk and just all of a sudden start bouncing around everywhere enjoying everything that life has to offer enjoying the local music scenes all over the place and just going nuts and living life in a way yeah Yeah, do it man come on over we'll (laughs) hook up Come to Bristol, man. Oh, I'll end up making like a whole entire tour. It's like, I'll, of course, you know, probably have to start out in London just because that's where the flight's going to land. But then all yeah. of a sudden go to Bristol, end up going to somewhere like Leeds, maybe up to Manchester, or just go all over the place, have some fun with it and just go nuts. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's all going on. It's, it's so good. And yeah, do it. Do it. Come and join. Come join the party. Oh, I will. And hopefully during that party, there'll be some point in time where you guys will be playing live so that I can be in the middle of the crowd. All of a sudden, you know, that pit's going to open up and all of a sudden you're going to see some kid in a backwards baseball cap. It's like, now who the hell is this guy going absolutely crazy? And I'll just probably get knocked down and like stand up and just wave and be like, hey guys. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to be waiting for that moment forever now (laughs) until that happens. I'll never be satisfied. 
Oh, it'll happen. Trust me. I've got a goal in mind with when it comes to these podcasts. It's every artist I have in the podcast, no matter what. If I have a chance to see them play live, I'm going to make sure it happens. Doesn't matter if all of a sudden it's like, oh, it's a Tuesday and I have to, you know, travel two hours to go and see it, even though I have to work the next day. Psh, fuck that. I'm not going to remember getting good night's sleep and going to work the next day in the long run. I remember going to that show, seeing that band and enjoying a good time. That That's is right. a fact, man. Yeah, you know, you never, never remember what you don't do. That is very true. So when it comes to, you know, you guys, Guys, you guys, the new LP coming out. So since, you know, live music come back, what have live shows been like for you getting back up on stage, playing once again, and just, you know, ripping it all to shreds? It's therapeutic, man. It's 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 been just, like, insane. It's just been so, such a, like, a warm feeling. Like, it was always, it was always so good. Like, they, we, yeah, we they... were playing up until, up until lockdown. Like, we were on tour from when we started in 2018 all the way up to uh, the first week of February. And then like a month later, the world fucking shut down. Yeah. Um, and it's all, it was always a good feeling, but since going back, it's, it's been better than ever. You can, you can feel like uh, it's like a visceral feeling like people want to be there. And we, it's like pouring out of every fucking pour it's uh it's it's literally oozing out that everyone everyone wants to be there people are going more nuts than ever and um i'm just coming to the, like the far reaches like it though we played a, a festival in in swindon uh like the week before last and it was just like Sw- swindon's not the, uh, the major city but it was a, it was a sunday night and yeah. It, it was just rammed and people just going nuts like all day as well. It was like a full day festival. So it was just like, it was an awesome testimony. It was just, it just felt so cool. Yeah. And that's like one thing, even like we were talking about festivals as well. One thing I've seen over here with some of the festivals I've attended where it doesn't necessarily matter when it comes to the live music saying anything that's going around with the construct festival, everything around there, it could be good, bad, whatever it could be atrocious. I went through some shit like that in September, but just going into the festival and all of a sudden just seeing whatever band was on there. If, it, if they sounded interesting and all of a sudden they got a, they were having a pick going, didn't matter if they were the biggest band in the world, didn't matter if they're on the headline stage, didn't matter if it was like a small band from like 20 minutes away from where the venue was. And I had no idea who they were, but I'm like, heavy sound? Mosh pit? Okay, I gotta go check <laughs> this out. And it's just being able to just be a part of that and just see the bands up on stage, just enjoying it like to the fullest and like you said that therapeutic standpoint where letting all your any any kind of aggression out letting kind of any kind of anger out just letting any you know insecurities out at that same point in time just being in the moment and the fans in the in the in the middle being in the moment once again just enjoying every aspect of it i mean just seeing that happen and also see, hearing that you guys are able to bring that kind of energy feed off that kind of energy especially even with the music that you have too i mean your music is energetic as all hell i mean I'm, i was listening to it probably the whole entire day before we did this while i was working and it was pretty much like i got to that point in time where listening to it and all of a sudden I'm getting like amped up and i have to go to a meeting and it's just like all right this is what we play for just get yeah. all up for it. <laughs> love that just flip the table yeah. <laughs> that's that. almost happened once before <laughs> i love that i live for that <laughs> it's it's a funny thing you say that as well man because actually more than i would say previously i have had people that I, like always, always go and chat to people and people at the merch table come on over and um there's so many people i'm like the first question is always like oh who, like who are you here to see especially in these day festivals people can come from all over like the, the lineups mix, the lineups from all over the country. And they're just like, no, we're just, we're just here. And I'm like, that is fucking sick. Cause yeah. that, that is so awesome that they're, they're taking a complete punt on, yeah. on going to that show. And they're just like, we just love the music, want to see some live music. I'm like, that is so sick. And as, as an artist, that is, that is so great to hear as well. Cause you're reaching new people. 
like it's always so nice that when you've got a following and you're meeting people and seeing familiar faces and um and yeah make, make it a family of um of, of uh, like a fandom but uh when you're just seeing people come coming in who are just completely taken upon and then coming up to you and being like i really love that you're like ah, oh, you didn't need to do that like okay. that's fucking that's so sick it makes a, it's a huge huge vibe yeah, and I mean, one of the major reasons why people are doing that is because when they, I mean, this comes from anybody where you go and see a live show, even if you don't know the band, you have no idea who they are, but all of a sudden something draws you into it and you want to go up and talk to the band at the merch table or wherever you can after the show. It's because when you were in that moment, when you were watching them perform live, no matter what else was going on, you got to be so present in that moment and just take it all in and connect on such a heavy emotion to that band, no matter what it might be. Whether all of a sudden say, you know, you weren't you weren't feeling the best and things weren't going very well in life and the band that you listened to either brought back this feeling of happiness and this feeling of just enjoyment that you might have been missing or might have amplified a little bit of that to help you understand what you were going through. Or if you're feeling happy all of a sudden, you know, getting that energy and just keep riding that and just keep riding that wave of positivity. You connect so heavily on that. Like you're compelled to want to go and talk to those bands, connect with them. And with you guys being able to talk back, like, you know, with those fans and have those conversations and build those relationships in a personal way, what's going to end up happening is, is now, you know, you guys start going out on the road and all of a sudden these people are going to show up, but they're not going to show up alone. They're going to show up with their friends that like the same kind of music because they're going to say, we saw this band live once before and it was absolutely insane. It was absolutely incredible. Now they're close to us and you get a chance to go see it with me. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's a dream, man. And that, yeah. that is the, that's the machine that we love and we, we love to see that grow. And uh, when you actually like physically see that happening, it's just, it's the best feeling ever. Oh, it's something you just don't want to get rid of because it just, it kind of ass assures you of what you're doing where this is, if this is, you know, especially with every musician, like you're coming into music, you, you're creating a band, you're starting with writing music, you're trying to release it because this is your dream. This is what you want to do. And to be able to, you know, hit fans with such a positivity, such this heavy connection through emotion, whatever emotion they're feeling, and just being able to provide that. I mean, and you're doing that with your stories, you're doing that with your sound, you're doing that with whatever you're trying to express at that moment. It just really honestly no matter what it is it just grows positivity it just grows the ability for people to potentially even do the same thing whether they're you know want to go into music or whether they want to go into a completely different venture because everyone has different desires everyone has different likes everyone has different things they want to go after but it might give them the idea it might give them the drive to finally go after that mm -hmm. yeah absolutely, absolutely man and that yeah that is literally that's why we do it that's what that's what we're here for do it because you love it. And honestly, when it comes down to, you know, as life goes on, as of course, you know, we get old and we're going to be the ones like in wheelchairs and walkers and like w having to sit down watching Wheel of Fortune with robot anchors and whatnot, just like robot <laughs> Pat Sajak. All of a sudden, you know, we're going to be looking back in life and we're going to be thinking about the stuff that we did and the stuff that we enjoyed. We're going to be looking back at the memories. We're not going to be looking back at the things we didn't do and looking back with regret. No, it's going to be focused on the memories we have and the enjoyment we had going through life doing that. Yeah. And hell yeah. And you never know where that starts as well. Like that, that, that spiral, that moment can come from literally just being that spontaneous and going out to a show or going to a show and seeing a support band that you weren't expecting and that that could spiral off. Hell, that's how we got into music. It's yeah. go, going to shows and I'm going to see something because a friend told me about this band, but then the support band is actually like blown them out of the water and it's just like, well, now I'm going to follow that career and yeah. And, and be inspired in entirely different ways and, uh, yeah, you don't know what that kind of feeling is going to evoke. And it, yeah, it, it can send people into total spirals of like just pure awesomeness. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's a, it's a fucking joy to do. And it's just what we were missing. Like it's the, yeah. the hugest thing that we were missing before literally like, like yeah, a couple of months. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah. yeah. Absolutely insane. But it's back, it's back and yeah, it's be better than ever. It's back. It's better. <laughs> ever. But 
after that, I do want to ask you both a question because some of you just were talking about, you know, going to see these bands like and just there might have been like just a moment and you never know when that moment's going to come. But, you know, you especially with the how you guys are working right now with Raptors was is there a specific moment that you can remember from your past, whether it was anything regarding music that, you know, just really hit you in a certain way where it's like, you know, you wanted to go into this, you wanted to start making music, you wanted to start, you know, going after your dreams in this. What was that moment like? And what was that exact moment? And that's going to be for you, Matt, as well, because I'm curious to always hear about like the inspiration moments of like the, whoa, this is what I want to do. <laughs> I I think as early, like as far back as I, as I can go, like my parents were like big, big rock and rollers and they were like into like 80s and 90s rock. And so seeing videos, that was one thing. And that was what kind of set me off. And I'd be watching like Guns N' Roses videos and Queen. And and so and I'd be like, oh, I could, I've got a vibe for this. But I, I honestly do think is first shows. That's where I was like, well, now I'm hooked. And at a young age, I got to see Incubus play because they they played it. And I'm, I'm from the middle of Wales, so there's there's nothing there. And <laughs> so we got to go to Cardiff. And so that was like a huge deal for me. And I saw Brandon Boyd singing and I was like, oh, I need to be doing that. And then crazily enough, like a couple of weeks later, Slipknot played. <laughs> And uh, I I was like as tall as the barrier and got to the barrier and I remember the the feeling of the drum like all the and all the percussion literally hurt in my chest because <laughs> it was so so loud and I was like I kind of like that <laughs> that's what I want to be doing and that that is yeah it was from there it was. It was like, I need to go home. I'm going to make a band. I'm going <laughs> to smash some barrels. I need a baseball bat. <laughs> and yeah, it never, never turned back from that. It was, it was always, yeah, from there, that school, school bands. And, uh, yeah. and it evolved from there. Yeah. So I, I grew up listening to probably similar sort of music. I grew up listening to Iron Maiden and Black Sabbath and Deep Purple and all that kind of stuff. And I actually started playing drums before I really got into that kind of music. Somebody offered drum lessons at school. And I was like, yeah, sure, why not? And then a few years later, I really started getting into that kind of stuff. And then my first ever gig, I went to see I made it with my parents and uh, in Manchester. And that was it. I was like, I can't see the drummer. I can see his drum gear and it's massive <laughs> and it sounds amazing. And this is it now. This is me now. That was it. And then went to see Maiden a few more times, saw some local bands at the local pub, and I was like, no, nah, yeah, dr drums. That, that was it. It was just for tunnel vision, man. I am drum. <laughs> I play drums now. This is me. Honestly, just now I was hearing about, you know, thinking about like a kit where it's just, it's so massive where you can see the kit, but you can't really see the drummer. I remember seeing, it was uh, the only time I ever got to see Rush and seeing Neil Peart behind the kit. Yeah. Like, I was just watching, I'm like, it's always one of those moments where there's only been a couple of moments where I've watched musicians where it's like, there's some things I don't know how to do, but then there's that. It was like watching Neil Peart drum in 2013. Cause I used to, I was try I played the drums when I was a kid for about four or five years, but then I gave it up because yeah, I'm not that smart when it came to when I was 14, 15 years old, but it was just watching that moment, just trying to see what he was doing. I'm like, how does this guy create this sound? How does this guy move this certain way? How does he keep, how does everything happen with such like a difficult style? but you do it so perfectly and so effortlessly. And like from a guitar standpoint, I saw Alter Bridge right before the pandemic hit and I was just stuck watching Mark Tremonti play guitar. I'm like, I don't even know how to play it for guitar. It's a foreign concept to me, but how does that actually happen? And how does yeah, that Tremonti actually work? Phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. He, he's a fucking man machine. <laughs> On, along the same sort of vibe, like I, I remember it was a few years before I kind of got into Led Zeppelin. And then as soon as I heard John Bonham's drums on a couple of different albums, it was the same sort of thing. It's like the Neil Peart thing is so calculated and he does things with such ease that it's amazing. But I don't, I'd never heard kind of emotion played through drums before until I kind of heard John Bonham's grooves and his feel. And I was like, yeah, now I'm hooked. 
And same thing with Tremonti, man. The way he plays, mm. there's just something about it that the feel, the whatever, the timbre he plays with, it's just yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, it's it's a, it's like a language, isn't it? It's 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 not just with 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 players. There's playing, and then there's there's emoting. And yeah. it's, it's it's that's an extension of the soul. Yeah. And yeah, that's that's the thing that hooks you in. Yeah, you, being being able being able to put what you're feeling in that moment down on a track or a gig or whatever, and getting that across on whatever your instrument is is some some real special. Oh yeah, if you're able to do that, you're gonna be able to connect with so many other people in so many different ways because just being able to emote and be able to describe that emotion through your playing style, through your vocals, whatever it might be, it yeah. just gives people a chance a chance to like take something that's very tough, very emotional that, you know, they're very, it's a very hard thing to describe, very hard thing to try and go through and just really tell anybody about and just kind of put into a tangible experience. But then you listen to music and it emotes that same emotion. It hits you the exact same way that you feel. And it's, you know, you're trying to explain it. Okay. Listen to this song, feel the emotion behind it. That's what it feels like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, it's it's the best feeling. Saying that when I went home from Slipknot and and attempted that, it was it was noise <laughs> for for many for many years. I'm not sure what I was feeling at that point, but it probably sounded like a dying cat. For bless my parents, <laughs> not putting a pillow over my head. <laughs> Same. But, uh, yeah, fair. <laughs> My, my next door neighbor, we lived in a semi detached house. My drum kit was next to my neighbor's house. I'll never forget. My next door neighbor came around one day and said, You know, I've had to blue tack all my ornaments onto my fireplace because they keep bouncing off every time. We play. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm emoting. <laughs> So you're just going to end up like sitting there just going nuts on it and acting like Ron Burgundy, just like constantly finding, I'm in a glass cage of emotion. <laughs> <laughs> that is, yeah, that, that's, that still resonates in the, uh, in, in the vocal booth every time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, very much so. Cage of emotion. <laughs> but one thing I do want to pick up on is like, you know, talk about those moments and between the two of you, it all really kind of like, especially started like at a live show, at a live performance, whether it was seeing Incubus and just seeing the performance on stage, feeling the percussiveness in the bass from Slipknot, just feeling that hit in your chest. And then everything with Iron Maiden, it's all just seeing the spectacle they put on as a show. I mean, even with myself as well, it was like I had, you know, I really didn't get fully into like music and like really start wanting to do this until I got to go see my favorite band live at a very bad time in my life. And it was just at that moment, everything that was bad for an hour and a half just went away. Nothing else mattered. Everything that mattered was just what was right in front of me and just the happiness that I felt there. Then, of course, my favorite song comes on. There's a whole mosh pit going. I'm kind of like, I've never done this before. I jump in there and it's just click. That was yeah. it. It was, it was just, oh, man. It's So anybody out there that's listening, when it comes to me, when it comes to anything you want to do, honestly, just go kind of potentially in that realm and experience something there. If it's music, go to as go to those concerts, see what happens. Just, you know, you never know when that moment's going to be where all of a sudden you, you see something or you feel something and it's just that moment. Yeah. It happens, but you got to put yourself in that position to do it. That a hundred percent. And like, yeah, a hundred percent felt that way as well. Cause it's, Same, yeah. it's so easy when you, especially if you're feeling down on, on yourself as well. And you're like, got this opportunity and naturally you just you your own worst enemy and that that little saboteur in your head's like you just want to stay at home you just want to just be by yourself but when you you can take that step and go it's i would say 99.9 percent .9 of the time by the end of it you're like what was i worried about like you come back with a completely different headspace it kind of puts things in a completely different perspective where you're like, okay, I'm, I, I can do this now. I can carry yeah, on. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah, it's, it's uh, definitely, I know it's easier said than done when you're in there, that headspace beforehand. But like when you can just say yes and, and go, it's, yeah, it's just no looking back. Oh, I can, 
easily 100% attest that and agree to that because I still remember in one time in 2019, it was I had tickets to go see a show and I just I had to work overtime that day, like 12 hours on a Saturday, and I just didn't even want to go. But I said, fuck it, I bought the ticket. We'll just see what the hell happens. It was the first time I ever saw Ice Nine Kills live. And it was, nice. it, and I look back at that, I'm like, that was the best show I've ever been to. That's the one that just sticks out to me as like the best show ever. So now it's like, oh, there's a show I want to go see. Oh, I'm not feeling good. Oh, I'm, I'm feeling like I can't even, I've had shows where it's like my, I've gotten out of bed the day of the show and I could hardly move. Cause like, I just was I all of a sudden got sick or something and it was just a struggle just to get there. But I know what happens when, you know, I don't want to miss out on it. Plus see those shows, you see the energy, the adrenaline that kicks in. No matter how crappy of a day you're having, no matter how crappy I potentially was feeling, it's like, I'm going to go there and I'm going to have a fucking blast. And every single time I drag myself and do it, I don't regret it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, 100%, yeah. man. That's, that's so good. That's so so good to hear. And yeah, yeah, that completely resonates as well. Like, we've definitely been there. And it's yeah, just the that. greatest feeling. And that feeling of elation afterwards is just, yeah, out of this world. <laughs> It's kind of like a like when people exercise, like you get that runner's high after like a no long run that you've accomplished. It's like going to a show. It's like you get that feeling once again. It's just this natural state of just happiness and euphoria because you just experience something that you absolutely love and connected with on any sort of way. So once you guys get a chance to go over to the U.S., you guys are playing a show. It's like, oh, this is going to be like a two and a half hour drive for me. I may have busted up my hand, completely broken a couple of fingers the day beforehand. Still going to jump in the car and be like, we're doing this shit. I don't care what happens. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll hold you to it, man. <laughs> well, I've already kind of done something like that beforehand where I have broken a, a finger at a show and still, and they just kind of like, oh shit, that's not right. Literally got it like reset, taped up by the EMTs. And I'm like, I'm still going back up there. I'm still going nuts because I just got on this shit. <laughs> that is good going. That is, that's, uh, that's good going. We've we've done the same thing on, on stage actually. <laughs> we've, uh, me me and uh, me and Harley had a night in A and E after a show uh, when we were in the middle of a tour, and Harley Harley had somehow in by third song into the set yeah. smashed his eye. We thought he dislocated his eye from his socket. Um, so yeah, it was. <laughs> it was bad. Matt couldn't I, even look at He turned around to me at one point. I was like, what? <laughs> like, cannot look. If you've seen the Goonies, he was sloth from the Goonies. <laughs> so he, so he, his eye was up here. And he was like, he turned to me. And he was like, is it okay? And I was like, I'm, I'm not going to react. Because uh, that's one of the first things is, Never let anyone who's uh, panicking see any panic. So I was like, it's totally fine, man. It's totally fine. And he was like, slowly like, I don't think I can see. We were like, it's all good, man. we only got three songs <laughs> left. Let's go. We can do this. And then he turned to Ian and he was like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was there going, yeah, don't show any panic. Don't show any panic. Ian was like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, he, 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 well, the thing is, he's a fucking trooper. Like, he he was like, uh, I don't think I can see him saying it into the mic. And someone was like, oh, shit. Next thing we see is like an ice pack and a shot coming through the crowd. <laughs> 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 so someone had been to the bar and, like, had some ice on his face. And he was there, like, shooting rum. <laughs> he got through. He got through. But then afterwards, we were like, okay, yeah, we definitely need to get you to hospital. Yeah. And we spent we spent a full eleven hours from oh, like man. midnight till eleven a.m. Yeah, so two, Har- out. Harley and Sai went into the hospital. The other, I think there was four of us at the time, sat in the van trying to sleep in the cold <laughs> in the fucking car park at this hospital. <laughs> and then we woke up, went and got some breakfast, and went to play another show. Didn't we? Yeah, we had to play. <laughs> we were playing a festival the next day, and. Uh, we got, yeah, got down there. Me and Harley, well, Harley slept. I watched over Harley to make sure he didn't die as I didn't fall out. So <laughs> I had to I had to stay up the whole time, making sure he didn't die. And then, yeah, we drove like four and a half hours to, to go to the next show. He did it with massive shades on. We were like, <laughs> can we borrow some shades? 
<laughs> they had these like bug eye lens the most, the most embarrassing sunglasses, but they were better than his face at that point. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that, no, absolute fact. Played that and fuck it. Oh god, yeah. I had to. I I took the the sucker of the drive home then as well. It was like oh. forty eight hours. It's how much trust these guys put in me. I was like, I got this. <laughs> I'll drive us home. I, I've already hit the wall. But yeah, what a trooper. Yeah, it's uh, but powering through, and he's uh, yeah, he's the better man for it. I, honestly, sometimes you just power through because that's it's it's for what you love to do, and if that's what you love to do, it's like yeah, sometimes injuries, yeah, they're not going to derail you, even when Harley looks like Sloth and the Goonies, and but <laughs> I mean, he could have come out like with his eye kind of like messed up with the festival. You guys could just play like the Goonies theme as like your walk on track, just have him go up the mic and yeah. go, like, "Hey, you." Guys, oh, it been we on the missed sample the bag. trip. Yeah, yeah we should have sampled it there. I could have truffle shuffled all the way. <laughs> <laughs> or, or what you could have done was gotten like a big giant eye patch, but like put like the skull and crossbones on it, and then have the Pirates of the Caribbean theme, and just have him walk out there, but also like make it look like he has a peg leg. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he could have totally done that, throwing some shapes and kicking up his peg leg. <laughs> Oh god, they yeah, that was good. That was but, good going. But you would have I'll say you would have to have a bottle of rum for him though, so when he gets on stage, you can do like the Captain Morgan pose with the rum and just like basically go all oh, all pirate, all cartoon character, and all Captain Jack Sparrow rolled into one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that that's him summed up really. He was he was <laughs> definitely on the rum by the time we played the set. I mean that's what got him through. I remember dragging him from the festival at like stupid o'clock in the morning. I was like, <laughs> fair play, he's lasted, but he's it. gone through the other end. I was like, yeah, get yeah. out. <laughs> Take your painkillers and go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> So like turning back, like nope, 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 no, nope, no more drinking, no more part. Your your eye might fall out, man. You know, just just chill for right now. You've done good. You've done good, man. We just don't want you to lose your eye. We don't want you to actually become one eyed Willie here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It all comes full circle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we we don't want you. We don't want you to go from one Goonies character to another. Come on, like yeah, can... that's literally it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I mean, just that just speaks to the love of the music and just like the love of what you guys do because when something like that happens, especially on stage, like the amount of times where many other people just like, oh shoot, you know, stop. I mean, it's totally understandable in that situation, but if you want to press on and keep going, you're doing that because there is some sort of love, there is some sort of passion that is behind there that is overpowering you know, sometimes common sense just to kind of, okay, I, you got to get the stuff taken care of. The, the least thing of the common sense was there was never even a thought at any point. No. Now, like looking back at it now, there was there was never any point that we were like, oh, we're going to have to stop at any no, point. It wasn't no, even like a, a discussion. It was like, oh, this is an inconvenience. This is going to make us slightly more <laughs> yeah, late. We were, we, were supposed then, to get, we were supposed to get some sleep tonight. Yeah, we were going to see not. that and then we were get, meant to be in Plymouth. <laughs> And it, it was, it was, it was never like, oh shit, we're gonna have to pull it. And it was just, it was just like, when, when are we good to go? <laughs> and it was, yeah, it, it was just nonstop. We genuinely didn't, didn't think about it. I think Harley was like, oh, I haven't had a shower at one point. <laughs> and that was like his only qualm. We were like, yeah, I've got a fucking eye, let alone shower. Like. <laughs> So your eyes about to pop out of its socket. You're in the hospital for 11 hours, and you got to figure out how to play this show. You, there's no question about it. But your only gripe is the fact that you have not stepped in the shower and have not put shampoo in your hair. Yeah, we were like, you were fucking smelling before. Yeah. And anyway, man, don't worry about it. You're just, yeah, man. I'll say just, you know, go all like, you know, 11, 12-year-old boy, just grab a can of Axe body spray and just spray him down. No one's going to want to pop, probably like come within like six, seven feet of smelling distance yeah, of him. But with the way his eye was, I mean, would that have been the worst thing? Now, no one's messing with his eye. Uh, yeah, that, that, is, that is a fact, actually. Yeah, the, uh, the Axe spray... Uh... <laughs> Is I'm pretty sure that's what they said in A and E to do. Is, uh, <laughs> here's some the great, is it, get yeah. yourself some Axe spray. <laughs> yeah, here's a paracetamol and some Axe spray. <laughs> or, or if you're feeling a little bit more on the uh, nice side of it, you could have just gotten a nice bottle of Febreze pumpkin scent. You could have smelt like you know autumn. 
that's the posh shit. Uh, we got. Yeah. We got <laughs> he uses that on the daily. It's <laughs> <laughs> you, you, had, you had to make him smell more like a. Well, I'm trying to get the at like a perfect axe. Uh, like a scent for because I remember this one time literally for like a white elephant gift for Christmas my dad got three little bottles of Axe body spray and the the the, the, the scents were they just labeled them black dollar sign dollar sign dollar sign and nice. really ripped the abs <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know which one would fit with Harley though so you know uh... <laughs> Maybe black, <laughs> maybe black. Maybe would, black. Would, it would work, but yeah, the, the other definitely one's not, not the other two. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, just scratch, just you could scratch out black and just put on there like Sex Panther or something because sixty percent of the time yeah. it works every time. Every time. We'll, just put, we'll just add beard, black beard. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah he's, he does have the beard. We could yeah. we could just uh, scrape it into the bottle. We'll, yeah, we'll carve it in yeah. to make it his own. But then if you're at I'll say if you're at a beer on, beard on it, then Blackbeard, I mean, with the Zypop, a pirate, I mean, it's... Here we go. Here we go. It all Here comes go. back to the pirate. Speak, <laughs> speaking of which, we got some rum. Let's... let's... It's a yeah. Slight intermission, sorry. We I'll, I'll talk while pouring rum. Oh, Let's perfect. See. You know, slight intermission, especially if we're talking about pirates. I mean, you gotta have rum with it. And do yeah. I have any rum in the house? I don't think I do right now. <laughs> No, I, I don't. Unfortunately, all I've got is I've got, I've got tequila and like some gin, and that's it. <laughs> that's the good shit. <laughs> that, that's me though. Beer, gin, tequila. Usually, what I stick with. It's a uh, weird arc. It's a very weird arc. <laughs> is is there a big like gin kind of culture in America? Not really. Usually, when it comes to America, when it comes to like drinking wise, I mean, you got your heavy amount of beer drinkers. I mean, the the where I live. Uh, this is where the Paps Brewery initially was from. Schlitz, Blatt's, uh, Miller is brewed here. So, like, oh, beer is a huge thing. But, like, when it comes to more, like, the, uh, like, you know, spirits, hard alcohol, that kind of stuff, it's much more evolved around either vodka or whiskey. Yeah, yeah, the classics. That's, that's fair. I think for, for the most part, it's, it's kind of always been the same here. But there's a huge, huge, huge market for gin over here now. It's like... There's, there's like whole, in Bristol, it's like whole gin bars where they do like 300 different types of gin. Yeah. There's, there's like a bar on, on one of the main streets and yes, yeah, it's, it's called gin and juice, but that's like the, the, the last thing they actually do is just like, it is, there's, there's, yeah, over 300 types of gin and it's, it's insane. But like, yeah, it's, it's only kind of in the, in the last like couple of years been, been a real thing. So I was intrigued by your, your gin, your gin tastes. Yeah, I, honestly, it, you fit it right in in the UK, man. Yeah. Honestly, I don't know what it is. It's like I, we trying to think of. Okay, so this is how the whole entire me liking gin started. There was, I was, uh, at a, I was up at, uh, on vacation, like a family vacation type of thing, extended family thing, because my aunt and uncle they own a place uh, about you know three four hours drive north in the north woods here and like where I live. So it's like okay, you know, kind of cool. And we were talking one day, and they were talking about how gin like has made like you know when their friends drink gin like they get angry and my brother who manages a bar was i was like well that's not everybody he's like when i drink gin you know i just have fun with it we just like laugh like just get giggly and shit so they were like my brother and i were on one side the rest of my family was on another side and my brother and i kept making this joke about how you're gonna have gin day one day where it was we were just gonna go the whole entire day with her drinking alcohol it was just gonna be gin and that was it the next day, I'm literally down at the pier. I'm fishing in the morning, and my brother brings down like my. Uh, he comes down with a drink for himself, but he also brings down my shaker bottle. I'm like, okay, you know, cool. He brought down my shaker bottle. I tasted it. I was expecting water. No, he made me a gigantic gin and tonic. Yeah. <laughs> so at that moment, we, at that moment, we knew it was gin day, and we went the whole entire day <laughs> drinking gin. Gin day engage. By the time like it was not, it was nighttime, you know, everyone's in the house, like people are playing board games and whatnot. My brother and I were playing this board game against my mom and my brother's girlfriend. And the conversation that my brother and I are having, it was just hysterical. We just thought that we were just getting along swimmingly, like this was like the best thing ever. And it didn't seem like we were paying attention to the game, but we were winning every step of the way. Like we knew what was going on. Was, and it wasn't until like we won like five or six straight games in a row. They're like, "Why are you guys like so energetic?" And all this, and I just yelled out, "Jinday!" <laughs> <laughs> and 
at that moment, I'm like, I have found an affinity for gin. I had a friend who got married. It was like an open bar type thing. I literally was going to the open bar. The guy asked me to sit there for like two minutes just so like no one would steal his tips. I said, fine, sure. Comes back. He's like, all right, what do you want? Like, I'll give you top shelf stuff for the rest of the night because you made sure that no one stole my tips. I'm like, well, I'm drinking gin and tonics right now. So he's like, okay, you know, rail gin, fuck no, go get Tangare. And I'm getting like at good gin and talk. I'm like, fuck yeah, here we go. Yeah. I had gin day for a wedding. And then I end up uh, during the pandemic, I end up uh, hanging out with this one girl. She always kept coming to my house and she was big into gin as well, but she liked this French gin. So I'm like, okay, we're going to be doing gin and tonics, but you're happy. I'll, I'll, let you, I'll get you your French gin. Don't worry about that, but I'm getting the gin that I want. So we constantly was like, okay, hanging out, boom, gin and tonic time. End up on New Year's Eve because she got she ended up with COVID at 2020 into 2021. Couldn't go to her, the New Year's thing we were going to go to. Showed up outside her house. I'm like, well, I'm not going to let you not, you know, celebrate the New Year. So I brought oh, the gin and tonic oh, to that, you. That, nice. that you romantic. Well done, you. Well done. That's yeah, that's good. That is that's a, that is that is sweet, man. And then she basically ghosted me two weeks later after knowing her for like almost a year. So God uh, damn. What That's the story of my life, guys. Oh, man, that is, that is unappreciated. I, I'd, I'd have put a ring on it right there. <laughs> <laughs> you turn up at my, my house with some gin. Willing that's, to get COVID, that, that is. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's me so. But now, especially with my affinity for gin, the fact that I like it, I mean, you're, you're talking about a, a gin bar in Bristol where they have 300 different types of gin and this make all these different types of gin drinks. I mean, what the question is? Why am I not over there now doing this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this, this is the question that's uh, been on my mind for the last two minutes. What, what are you doing over there, dude? Come, come on over. It's, oh, I, have you got a fa- Have you got a favorite um, like brands then? Um, I kind of have. Uh, I pretty much like would stick with like Tangeray. That's probably more popular brand over here. I just. It's consistent, smooth. I'm pretty much all into it. Uh, the French in that that one girl liked, it was actually pretty good. Not going to lie. I just didn't touch that. Otherwise, it's like, you know, if I can't get Tanger, I'll usually go like Bombay Sapphire. Just kind of call it at that. And- I really haven't had anything that was like, like, oh, my God, this is just like the best thing ever. I've just always had gin where I'm like, this is just really, really good. Really, really consistent. Why mess with this? Like, why mess with the uh, Why mess with success? I was getting tongue twisted on that one. <laughs> it's a tongue twister. That is so, yeah, it's, it's so true. In fact, yeah, we, we've got true. one of our housemates is a big gin drinker and he, he's a Bombay Sapphire and a Tangeray guy. So, oh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, uh, it, I, I, it's my, my, my girlfriend is, is big in, into her gins recently. Tarquins is the, is the one you should try. It's, it's, that's, that's badass. It's, the only, uh, the, I have to say I'm not a gin fan. The only gin I've <laughs> ever had and liked was by Brewdog. There was a lemon gin and it's fantastic. Uh, do you got, do you guys have brew dog over there? I, I think it's a British thing. Is it um, British? I'm not necessarily sure. I'm pretty sure the next time I go to the liquor store, though, because the one that I go to is known for just having as all these like just as much stuff as possible in the smallest space. They've got a whole aisle for gin, so I'm gonna look for that now. Yeah, yeah. yeah brew, brew dog is like a. It's usually an IPA. Um, like it's a huge, huge brand over here. In the last couple of years, it's like blown right up they've got like brew dog hotels and stuff um which is like insane so it's, it's gone to europe but i don't think it's gone much further know, afield maybe, but maybe. they've started branching into like spice rum and gin and everything they do is pretty bang on yeah. well i'm going to go and definitely start taking a look for us to see if it comes over the u.s because if i if i know any place that's going to get it to the place i always go to so if i see it you'll probably just end up be like hearing from over here in america just like uh <gasps> If you're going to do that, over, it's like, yep, he found it. Yep, he found it. <laughs> oh, it's happened. Yeah. Was, was oh, it oh, this... a little horseman? No, it's the, the gin is made it over there. The gin is made yeah. over there. Kevin has it. He's going to purchase it. All of a sudden, next thing you know, the register is going to ring up. It's like, all righty. And I, $175, how are you be paying that? I'm looking I'm like, I got all of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not going to say no. So here's my card. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, put it on the card. That is tomorrow, Kevin's uh, problem. That, 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 that's going to be a tomorrow, Kevin, problem. A today, Kevin, problem is how am I going to get this all home and what do I start out drinking first? 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Always a good dilemma to have. Yeah, but now thinking about honestly, probably it'll end up being like this next year, maybe around this time, all of a sudden, if that gin bar is still going strong, you might be walking in there and all of a sudden you're going to see some goofy guy trying all these different kinds of gin because he's just loving life and just enjoying it. And again, <laughs> probably wearing a backwards baseball cap and it'll be me. It'll be like, okay, we're going to end up going to mess with that guy just because it's funny and all of a sudden it's like, hey guys, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, that would be awesome. That would be it, awesome. It'll be come join me. Let's have a drink. And also I'm probably going to be seeing your show tomorrow anyway. So yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> sounds good. Yeah, it sounds, sounds like the perfect combo. It's the perfect combo. But I do also want to jump into the music that you guys make as well because yes, you guys are you guys got a new uh, LP coming out again, June twenty fourth, twenty twenty two. Living without death's permission. So you guys are everyone's gonna want to go check that out. But I do want to jump into it, especially because listening to the whole entire album, listening to all ten songs on there, the dynamics that are around there. It's absolutely insane where these songs are constantly having so many different influences and so many different sounds coming all through them. It's like something I listen to when I listen to uh, this uh, album called Love Languages by the band Wind Waker from Australia. No song sounds the same on this album. It's There's so many different things going on here where you can pick out a song and all of a sudden it's like, again, you listen to this enough times, like you're get, like two or three times, you're going to know which song is each song because each song is so unique, has its own flavor, has its own flowing sound. And the vocals all over the place. Like you're never going to get something that's going to be just all like consistently just, Oh, all unclean vocals in that standard pattern. You're going to get these different vocal patterns, different vocal tones all over, but different, you know, paces. Sometimes you're going to get some kind of something that's more hardcore. Sometimes it's more metalcore. Sometimes it's more punk rock. Sometimes it's more just, you know, standard, you know, flowing hard rock kind of thing. You're going to get all of it. So you get a, a couple of ballad moments in there as well. There's so much going on here that it has me still like kind of thinking about like I'm kind of spiraling on this one because there's so much to go into. I don't know where to start anymore. <laughs> That's the identity crisis in an album yeah. right there. Right. It's it's it really stems from the fact that we just love music. We love yeah. uh, all aspects of it and we we have a lot to say we still have a lot a lot to say um and i feel like this album had to be how it is it had to be this way cuz we wanted to and we just as songwriters we we want to incorporate everything that we love everything that we're feeling and we wanted the album to be to us as like as human as possible and as humans, we're not always in just like pure angry mode. Sometimes we're like raging angry, but then like the next day we could be having a laugh and we'd be going on yeah. tour. So we want we want to be able to incorporate everything that we're feeling the night before and then like what we're going out to the next day. Some Some things like take us by surprise. So we're having the best time in the world and then we're hit with like devastating grief um and really like the album to me was meant to be like a, a journal extract from the last couple of years um while we've been writing it because i mean we started writing it in in 2020 and everything kind of got uh, delayed and in that process of um that delay obviously everyone in the world's gone through a hell of a lot but us as, as people have also gone through uh, some devastating, some crazy elation. So it, it it needed to be as schizophrenic as as it is. Um, and when we listened back to it, to us, it kind of felt normal. But then when I when I kind of dissected it a little bit, I was like, oh yeah, this is this is kind <laughs> of like all over the place, isn't it? <laughs> but it's yeah, unashamedly us. Yeah. But even think about it, I mean, during that time, especially over the past years when you were writing this, I mean, emotions, just experiences and all different kind of things you could be thinking. Everything was all over the place. It didn't, I mean, mm -hmm. especially yeah. no matter where you were in the world, because all of a sudden it's, you had the shutdown, you had the uncertainty of what does the future hold? Will we ever get back to normal? What is going on? You had the uncertainty of all of a sudden, you know, sometimes things were opening up and all of a sudden shutting back down again. There was never any consistency. The uh, feelings of isolation, feelings of anger, hopelessness, feelings of hope at the same time as well. Or like over here in America too, with uh, we had all the unrest. We had a major election and just seeing all the, you know, 
amplification around there, everything around politics, you know, media, everything around there. There's so many different emotions that you could be feeling. So with, you know, this record, like you said, kind of like it has like a little bit of a diary feel of like the last two years and everything you guys went through. Having that sort of dynamic sound where everything is like, it does have a feel of like, you know, every song goes from one direction to the other, where it's you're not necessarily sure where it's coming from. That's what we experienced over the past two years. And one of my favorite quotes that I've ever heard is, art decorates space, but music decorates time. Through what you guys have written on here and what you guys have performed on here and what you guys have, you know, offered to the world, on this album one thing that it does is it offers uh you know a history of the emotion of the things we went through over the past two years because even though some of the direct experience that might have you know really influenced some of these songs are direct to you the songs are performed away written away and sound in a way where we're not connecting with the exact story you're trying you're like you're influenced from we're connecting with that emotion so that we can guide our own story through it and that's how we connect with everything so that's why this kind of music that you write here is perfectly decorative of the time from the past two years that's lit that yeah, nail on the head man that's yeah. li literally everything that we wanted to convey um and as much as it is personal to me and some of these songs are like are so 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 personal like that it's it's painful one of one of the songs in particular i haven't really listened back to because it was so raw when writing it and recording it um but i knew i had to get that out of me because i knew someone out there is gonna connect to it and it, it's not gonna be for the for exactly the same reason but there's gonna be something that someone's gonna here and they're going to cling on to and that is exactly my experience with everything that i love um and I, like everything that i've ever listened to I, and i'm i am sure i am 100 percent sure that it's not what the writer of that particular poem what that uh, art artist was trying to convey but when it hits you in that same way because you can feel something's coming out of that and that 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 is has been laced and people can tell like that's a, a great thing of being uh, human is that you can you can sense bullshit and you can feel what's real, even if you're not entirely certain exactly what it is, where you can tell something's bleeding out of that. Um, and yeah, you uh, can tell it's genuine. Yeah. Like there's there's so something that's very, very different between something that might sound nice. Uh, or, or something that might sound perfect yeah because yeah. there there are some uh but no shade but there are like some 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 bands that i'm like technically oh my god um but if it's just showing off but there's no there's no connection it's, it's yeah. like technically perfect and phenomenal but there's no emotional connection mm. it's yeah it's it's just not the same and i can be in awe of talent yeah. But um, I connect to and remember so much more when something hits me uh, emotionally as opposed to being oh, in awe of, say, a really good opera singer. If it's, yeah. Uh, uh, it's uh, yeah, it goes a lot further if, if you can feel that something's real. And I'd like to think that's what we put out there. And I think that was the, the joy of working with Oz, our producer as well, is that he is just a very, very human guy. He, he yeah, just gets yeah. you on a, on a level. He wants to know everything about the song. He wants to know, like, the influence behind it. Yeah, even, even at the very start of tracking everything, obviously we start by tracking drums, and even before then he knows what the song is about, what the journey of the song is meant to be. Even before we track anything, it's not just lyrics and melody and stuff you know it's the whole song is a vibe mm. yeah because i mean he's got he's got the skill to make everything just sound oh this could be like the heaviest of the heavy songs and, yeah. and he's he's worked with some of the heaviest of heavy bands in the uk um but it's not just about sounding good it's it's yeah. keeping something that's imperfect in um yeah, get, getting the feeling of a song, not just making something completely yeah. perfect. Yeah. And that is, that's the human element. That's what we always wanted to connect with.
Oh, absolutely. I have to agree with you on all that. Cause even like for myself, I take a look at other music that I'm not as like closely connected with. Like I really don't care that much for pop music. And a lot of the reasons because with, from, in my opinion, with the amount of production that goes behind it and the amount of just the kind of the research and okay, what's popular right now, what's hitting, what are people like really getting into and really focusing in on what is going to be popular rather than what is real and what is really going to hit on an emotional standpoint. I know there's a lot of people that like it. And if you like it, that is perfectly fine. More power to you because that's what makes you happy. Like go for it for myself, for a lot of other people though. And I believe this include you guys, the way you guys were talking, when it comes to, you tough to listen to. It doesn't have to be like pitch perfect. It doesn't have to be the most technical thing ever. It doesn't have to be like, oh my God, if you wrote this out, like this is the most perfect thing. What it has to do though is it has to, whatever message you're trying to convey, whatever story you're trying to tell, you have to have the emotion in there, even if it's not perfect, because sometimes the emotions you're feeling are not perfect. It's something that has to come out so that when you're putting it out there, like from a producer standpoint, it's do I believe you when it's like, you know, in the drums, like, do I like with this pattern that you're working with, do I believe that this is the emotion that's there when it comes to the vocals? Do is the vocals, do you believe that those vocals, the way you're singing it, how, whatever the tone is, whatever the pattern is, if you're going clean, unclean on it, do you believe that that is the emotion that's going there? I had a conversation with a uh, former ice nine kills guitarist, Justin to about this exact same situation on the podcast before. And that's one thing he always does with the vocalists. He works with It's like, yeah, you got, we might be, you know, doing like almost a hundred takes of this stuff, but it's like, yeah, it's, do you believe what you're doing? Do I believe what you're doing? Because if the producer doesn't believe the emotion that you're putting out there and you don't believe the emotion that you're putting out there, there's no way that the people listening or the fans are going to believe the exact same thing. Yeah, that's right. hundred yeah. percent. You can, you can detect it a mile away. Um, and yeah, it, for, for those that like slip through the net and do it that way, uh, yeah, you, you might get people who just like listening to it, but it it's 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 just yeah, it's not the connection that you're gonna get, and in in the long run, it's not gonna be what people come back to and 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 really yeah feel. Yeah, I, I mean, if, I'll say if you want a perfect example, just I mean, take a look at probably a band in the rock and metal scene that is probably if one of the biggest, if not the biggest out there right now with bring me the horizon, it's you take a look at what they did with, uh, with a cover of uh, bad habits by Ed Sheeran. When like what they did with that, the collaboration they did behind there. I mean, it's, is it the most perfect thing in the world? I'm not the biggest fan of it. Cause I just don't really care for the song or anything, but like hearing Ali Sykes unclean vocals towards the end of that, like it just adds such a different element to it. And what they've done in other tracks, like what they did on Amo, I, it was a lot, they went a lot softer, a lot more of an alternative route. Then they go to post-human survival horror and it's just all over the place, but the emotions hitting on every single aspect of it. So, I mean, is it the most perfect thing in the world? It's pretty close to being pretty perfect, but it's not the perfect thing in the world. Sometimes it's not the most technical thing, but it's all about connecting with the emotion of the story, putting out in the song and putting out the way that you believe is the best way to put it out there to tell that story. Because the only person that knows the emotion properly and knows the feeling that emotion properly for that specific song, for that specific influence is you because you're the one that went through it. So if you're able to uh, put it out there fully, honestly convey that emotion to us through the music, we're going to connect with that. We're going to feel that. And those are going to be the songs where you know, in concert, the ones that we go the craziest for, the ones that people are going to have their cell phones holding up and constantly back and forth, and the one or two guys that are still, you know, keeping it real and having their lighters up there. Or you're going to be playing those songs where all of a sudden people are listening to them in the, like, in the crowd and people are breaking down crying because of how emotionally attached they are to that song and how it brings them to a point where it's emotionally heavy for them, yes, but it's also therapeutic in a way because they know they're not the only ones going through something like that or have gone through something like that. Yeah, uh, absolutely, man. And there's like perfect examples as well. Um, with, with, with bring me, it's like, uh, I know they're like such a, a toss of the coin with people and, and you, you either love them or you hate them. But like of all the things through that, um, Ollie Sykes is just like the, the most perfect example because like i think he'd probably be the first one to tell you like he's he's far from the perfect singer and he's he, well, he's, he never was a singer like he's and he, he's not um 
he he's he's no Freddie Mercury or anything. He's not, and he's not pretending to be that. He he is very very honest, yeah. and and his lyrics can go from being clever to not being eloquent at all. And I that, I really really like appreciate that um, when he can just say go from from being poetic to just saying it as it is or saying something that like someone else might think it seems overly emo or something, but it's like, that's honest. Like, and he's not even, he's clearly not even double thought that it's that's, that's clearly like something that's scrolled out of him. Mm -hmm. And, and those, those things go a long way. Um, Whether it's, um, yeah, whether you've naturally come up with something and it feels really clever or it's just something that is, as fucking raw emotion as, as possible like it's 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 super important to just yeah put yourself out there and he's a, he's a perfect example of it even a little bit diving deeper into that example I'm taking a look at two songs from bring me the horizon that are on two completely different like wavelengths in terms of ali sykes's vocal style sound everything take a look at office of eternal with can you feel my heart and then look at drown off of that's the spirit i mean vocally those songs are so completely different. They sound completely different in every aspect of it. But you listen to them and the way the emotion is portrayed in those, like with Can You Feel My Heart, just feeling this feeling of just agony, just like flowing out of you and just the power of that. But then you go to Drown, it takes that agony and turns it into despair and just kind of mellows it out a little bit because having a more exhaustive tone to it adds to that feeling and is i mean is it the most technical is it perfect voice like like a freddie mercury voice no it's not but it's honest and it's getting that emotion out there the best way possible because it's something that someone like truly felt and you can understand that and if you're gonna be making music and you're gonna be putting that out there with what you truly felt in your voice we're gonna be able to feel that we're gonna be able to tell that and those are the artists that are the ones that really rise to the top are the ones where you can connect with them because when when you listen to their songs you believe the sound you believe the lyrics you believe the vocals you believe the instruments you believe every aspect about it absolutely yeah, exactly and that's 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 why they're doing as well as as they are so it's yeah it's a it's a tip of the hat to them because it's yeah it's incredible to see Oh, absolutely. And I do want to jump a little bit more on the album as well, because I'm going to put it this way. There was one song on this album where when I was listening to it, every time I kept wanting to come back to this one, there was something about it that just stuck out to me. And I was looking, I'm like, has this one been released as a single yet? And I looked, I'm just like, oh, it hasn't. So when the <laughs> album comes out, you guys are going to want to listen to this one. And the one that I kept coming back to was the death rattle. Ah yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm glad you said that, man. That's that's yeah, it's a wild card of a song. Um and yeah, we definitely floated that to the label as a as a single. We album. wanted that as a single. <laughs> <laughs> they, were, they were like, people are uh, may they were like maybe once they uh, maybe once people get to know you, because uh it's yeah, it's definitely that was when we were at our full swing of momentum of writing the album. This was oh, where we, I thought you were going to say full swing of lockdown craziness. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> we, yeah, yeah, tomato, tomato. Yeah. It's like it was the same thing. Like yeah, we were I fully so. into lockdown. We were fully had written most of the album, yeah, yeah, yeah. and we had been going through everything with a fine tooth comb, like absolutely everything. And we'd written some of the more like metal tracks and some of the more upbeat tracks. We had written a couple of the more ballad esque kind of uh, songs for one for a better term. Um, And we would, we were kind of going backwards on ourselves because we, we, we normally would go into the room and write, by jamming and just kind of like throwing an idea in there, probably start with a riff or like a melody. And we were like, let's go back on ourselves a little bit and let's try something new. It was getting to that point. It was yeah, like, it was. we're either going to just do a load of LSD and yeah. flipping beyond the ceiling, <laughs> like right, right in this one. No, we, we need to change something up because we, we'd written also, there was way more than 10 songs for the album. So we were, we, we had, done uh, uh, like a lot a lot more and we were like 
we need to well, let's let's change it up a little bit. So we started the dance route started with Matt with drums with drums with drums. Which uh, so it it went off off a beat that Matt uh, came up with, and it was it was a lot more swung and a lot more yeah. um, <laughs> like a bit of a jazz jazz feel to it, and that was my vibe. So yeah. from that, <laughs> all of a sudden, so I went. I've got just the thing for over this. I, yeah, I was like, that's that, that's this is where we're going. So yeah. we we came up with the basis of this song. Yeah, and we did, yeah. W- normally we would write as a group, but we kind of took the, this ball and ran with it yeah. uh, a little bit further, and then got Harley involved. And Harley, we got Harley on board. He was keen. Yeah. Well, initially he was like a little bit skeptical, but a little bit skeptical. But he came he came into it, and we were like. We're writing a 1920s jazz swing metal song. And he was like, okay, I can get on board with it. <laughs> and so we wrote the song, including the the outro, which you hear on the track now, which has a bit of a, a dynamic change. Uh, and we brought it to the other guys because we all live together. Um, uh, but we took it to, to the other two guys and they were like, what the f- fuck has been going on in your <laughs> in your house and we're like we're a jazz band now yeah stick with it come on trust trust us trust yeah us. yeah because i hadn't laid down the vocals i i'd written the vocals and like i kind of sung it around in the house and yeah musically by itself it, i think it, it was just like it's it yeah. sounds quite quite jazz swing and i was like yeah. I've, I've, I've got a vocal for this and you will get it and ian took a, like a lot of persuading before until he heard the vocals in full he was he was like i just i just don't understand what you boys are doing <laughs> and then i was like listen to this in full and he was like i get it <laughs> now i get it <laughs> so, and yeah it was it was it was all in there and it had come from this little little spiral and yeah yeah, that that was uh, that was possibly the most fun song to write, I think, on yeah, the whole album. It was. It was a lot of fun to write. And then we had the added sort of pleasure of getting a choir involved, mm-hmm. which was a fantastic experience. The Raptors Choir, the Raptets. The Raptets, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we we had to uh, we had to do this in during lockdown as well. So we we kind of sneakily got like anyone that we were like bubbling together and we were like it's gonna be a real simple melody but we're gonna put a mic in a room you're all gonna come in and uh and and do this and we laid it up like like Lots 20 times. 20 odd times to make make a choir yeah so that was, that was fun that was that was uh like girlfriends and friends of the band all all jumping in on the album there which is a whole lot of fun yeah but that yeah, that get again came from like this tiny, tiny little idea of of Matt coming up with this uh, thing. I was like, right, we need a piano, we need a trumpet, and we need a choir. We need to buy a cowbell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The the only thing you're missing was Will Ferrell just in a you know a shirt where you can see the lower half of his gut and just going doo doo doo. That's that all we were doing in the studio. That is all we were doing. <laughs> we, weirdly enough someone has literally just messaged our instagram i i earlier when we were in the studio and i said uh every, like chuck us some questions we're, we're here we're having a jam and someone literally put on is there ever enough cowbell <laughs> there's never enough cowbell on the track there never is because we got a fever and the only prescription more cowbell. <laughs> More cowbell. I, I wish I could imitate Christopher Walken, but I can't. So I'm not even. I can't. Even try. <laughs> yeah. it, it'll sound. It'll sound very, very bad. But and I can't even get that pattern down. Like his speech pattern is just so wacky. <laughs> so it's so, uh, it is jazz. He is a man. A man of jazz. What I mean, if you guys would have had like Christopher Walken do like a like have like an eleven like an eleventh track on the sound, but like leading into death roll like a a one minute intro, but have Christopher Walken's voice over the top of it just to lead into it. Now that would have been that would have added to the whole entire wackiness of the track, but it would have just kept it flowing and just been like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I. We we would spend the entire budget of the next advance to to get uh to get Walken to, to come in and do yeah. some, to do some spoken yeah. word. 
<laughs> oh, absolutely. Because, well, even like when it came to Death Rattle, the first thing that did catch my eye was just that intro because it does have that jazz feel to it, but also has that funk feel to it. I'm just like, this is yeah. completely and utterly different, but it kind of also mellows out the, tr- the the album to that point a little bit, especially you run through it from top to bottom where it's like, this is a little different. This isn't necessarily as heavy or as kind of sometimes as brash as some of the other songs up to this point. Adding that feeling of funk in there, kind of just like, all right, you know, kind of just jam with it. But it still has that metal taste, behind it, especially after, you know, it's the second part of the intro. It's like, all right, let's roll through this. Let's have some fun. But it was that choir chanting in the back that really was the thing that sealed the deal for me. It was the thing that kept wanting me to come back because right when you hear it, like after the second verse, just the, I mean, it, it was a choir, but also you guys had some pace behind it as well, where it wasn't just like a ho, 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 or like the, or like, you know, insert Halo theme here. No, it actually had some <laughs> pace behind it, had some flow to it. So it matched up so well with that backing pattern. And then also, uh, Simon, with your vocals, because I was trying to figure out like this pattern, it reminds me of two different things, but I can't think of what it reminds me of. It reminds me of this uh, this band over here in the United States called Here Come the Mummies. It's a bunch of session musicians that dress up as mummies and they play funk music, like rock fu- and funk infused. But everything, every song is based off of like all these different sexual innuendos and it's just hysterical. But it's a flow of that along music. with like a mixture of patterns that I've heard System of a Down do with Surge Tanking. So it was like a mixture of patterns between Surge Tanking and Here Come the Mummies. I'm like, it's amazing. What the I, fuck? I, but I, this I is awesome. To- yeah, I need I need some uh, here come the mummies yeah, uh, sure. in, in, in my life. That sounds that sounds like our vibe there. Well, well, they're, they're probably their most popular song is it's called Pants, and the whole <laughs> entire premise of it is not trying to come in your pants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where have these been all my life? <laughs> No, I, I'm, that's the first thing we're doing afterwards yeah. is, is checking these guys I'll say, out. It, there's another one that always is a f- fan favorite of they play live. is called Attack of the Wiener Man. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> just, they, oh, just... Amazing. That, weirdly enough, that was the, the working title of the second album. That we're <laughs> so we'll have, to, we'll have to change that now. For, for, literally, just if I saw the second album, I was like, Attack of the Wiener Man? <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's gonna go from to, like my face just like huh to oh to oh <laughs> that's lush but as you as as you say like with with the surge um the system of down was definitely something uh like a good few of us like we all have very different influences and we grew up with different things but um i think system of down is definitely something that uh, quite a few of us grew up listening to and yeah, it was sure. nowhere near like meant to be something that really shone through but like n- like naturally people have kind of gone ah, it's got a bit of system and it's like subconsciously it's irked in there yeah and it's definitely come through yeah. like i'm willing to wear that on the sleeve as well because like in in the same way that i mean growing up listening to system of down and they go from talking about the contents of their fridge to the Armenian genocide from track to track. I'm like, yes, that's what, <laughs> that's what I've grown up listening to. Of course, I'm writing songs about like the grief I've been through and then wanting to write 1920s swing. <laughs> and then, and then, well, I mean, I was yeah. going to mention songs that were unreleased then, but um, <laughs> <laughs> some of the other songs. <laughs> some of the other songs you're definitely going to want to check out when the album drops on June 24th. Yep, I just went all promo on there for you. <laughs> uh, yeah, we need that. Thank you, man. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's yeah, it's definitely definitely something that wasn't intentional, but um, when when people have brought it up, I'm like, yeah. Fuck it, yeah. like System of Down was a huge part of like me growing up and and yeah, the guys growing up and uh if that's coming across then fucking yeah, gonna wear that with a badge of honor. 
Oh, I, I think you should because, I mean, it, it's not something where it's like, you guys, it's like, oh, this is just System of Down. No, it's not. I mean, the sound is completely, it's just that pattern of like the potential manic style that System of Down has had in the past. It's that kind of influences in there. Whether it was from, you know, I mean, like you said, was System of Down, which kind of freaked me out. You said, you know, talk about the contents of their fridge because that was the first System of Down song I ever heard. To talk about the Armenian Genocide, which was the second System of Down song I ever heard. So I was like, what the fuck? Are you reading my mind? What the hell is going on here? But <laughs> it's, it's like the manic energy that was behind that pattern because when you use like that like uh influence like system of down pattern and like kind of like the vocal construction behind there the vocal pattern it adds the manic feel of the elements of the story that we're talking about here of what we're going into especially we went through the past years during the pandemic really going deep into that and talking about some of those things on some and alluding to some of those things yeah it's you're perfectly describing that emotion of what the hell is going on here? Like, what is, like, am I going to be able to see my family again? When am I going to be able to see my family again? Already it's Christmas. Um, Are we actually able to get together? Or am I going to end up having to spend Christmas by myself in the house? And the only way I'm be able to talk to my family is get on my, get on the phone and like do like a FaceTime or Zoom or stuff. And it's just like, yeah, you want to see my ugly sweater through this camera? No, I want to hang out with you. I want to talk to you. But it's just like this manic of everything can change at any given moment. And you never know what it's going to be. But it's also a manic feel of like anything can change at any given moment. But it might, it's most likely not going to be for the best, especially at the beginning of it. That manic feel behind that pattern really shines through on here because of the things that are being talked about. And it just, again, we talk about the emotion behind everything. It makes, it, it's believable because it's what you guys felt. It's what you went through. And when you said it wasn't intended to be on here, yeah, because this is what was supposed to be on here. This is what naturally came up in the songwriting process. This is why it's on there. It's because naturally it's supposed to be on there. Abs yeah, absolutely. Exactly, that, exactly. that is literally, that, and that is a kind of the mentality. We kind of... um always approach things even before the album and 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 since writing the album when we've continued like doing our thing it is um there's nothing ever off the table and we don't set out to deliberately do anything um it is just what we're feeling in the moment um what uh what emotion we're feeling at, at the time any kind of vibe that we're like feeling at that specific time and I, as we've said like um here and we've said many many times before it's like from day to day you're gonna feel different things and and there's no point in uh us trying it trying to write something that uh might be fashionable or it might be um what we're predicting might go down well it, like, it's just it's just not that like it's it it doesn't it wouldn't feel right to do that it's it's got to be right i've had a fucking awful week or i am i've just had the best time ever uh or we are hitting stride um with say a tour or we're in the middle of something awesome and and it's whatever that wave is that's what we're going to ride that's what's going to be put down on this song um and and then we move on because the next thing is going to come yeah. then and we're going to feel something completely different then so that's why and that's why some of the songs that that are on the album came together super super quick um and because we were just like in a complete zone, rock bottom is a seven zone for, for one was something that came together really fast. Demons in my headphones came together disgustingly quickly. Uh, it was, it was just from jamming, jamming out like one riff that Ian had. And then we were just like, yeah, that's it. And the lyrics wrote themselves in like a day. Um, but there's some others that we, we would start in a certain mode or like in a mood and then we had to leave on the back burner because it was such a specific mood that we were like, um, that, yeah, that's, one, that's one, not once what you we're kind in. of let go of that mood. It's hard to continue writing that that song in that in that way. It took us, I think I know which one you're on about. It took us a few months to kind of get back to it and get back in that kind of headspace of that particular vibe of that song to finish it. Yeah. 
and and I, I do think I don't think we've ever said this, but what that one was um, was that we were going through. It was a song that we started jamming a long, long time ago, and we were going through it a lot. And then we did hit uh, lockdown, and we were file sharing and picking the song apart. And there's something that just wasn't right. Like normally things can flow and. Um, the, this one just what like there's was something that wasn't right and we were like yeah. what is it like individually these pieces were like great but the song just didn't feel okay however lockdown ended so it literally gone on for like three three and a half months yeah. where we were like this what is going on with the song <laughs> then we got back in the room and it was this simplest little touch that yeah. we did in fact we extracted one bit of the song out of it and we were like <laughs> and it was the moment yeah. and I, we really didn't think that song was gonna be on the album because we were going through and it was getting close to recording time we were like this this we thought this song had it all and something's yeah. just not clicking and then all of a sudden we got in a room together and it was it was that was the vibe that we needed it was it was yeah. like quite a um a vibey song and it just didn't it had like like fucking huge riffs and stuff in it before and we were like as much as we normally love the riff we live by the riff but we actually just took all the riffs out of the song yeah. and we put a couple back in and there. then we chucked a couple back <laughs> <in>. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that yeah that song we yeah. might as well say it's the, it's the song dead awake pretty is the drugs we take which is on the album now um so th- yeah, that that song was that was a crazy, crazy journey. It's a completely different thing to to what's on there now, which is mental to think. Yeah, but Absolutely. at times, I mean, you just gotta let that happen. You gotta let it just flow the natural process because when you do something, I mean, look at all the different things that kind of came up, especially around that one specific song. Because if you guys didn't let that go around, you know, and just like let it, you know, faster for a little bit, let it simmer for a little bit. And get back to it when you like we're in a headspace that was similar or where that song was gonna end up going anyway. And you can't try and force it like that because then it doesn't come across as genuine. Doesn't come across as honest. And then it just would come out, and it's just like, oh, okay, that that's it. But again, yeah. listening to these songs, it's just like they come across as genuine. They come across as the manic energy behind them perfectly amplifies what we had gone through over the past couple of years. It just all puts perspective, just all the ways around it. And I mean, the title behind it, Living Without Death's Permission. Yeah, we're still here. We're still this. We went through all this stuff. It's like, maybe it came for us. Maybe it didn't. But now we're living life to the fullest. And the best way to do it is through happiness, through honesty, through yourself, and just... Whatever, whatever comes up, if it's gonna be that manic energy, ride the wave. Damn yeah, straight, man! Right. You fucking nailed right. it on the head again. Just ride the <laughs> wave. Preach it. That might be the best way to describe this album. Listen to it and ride the wave because that's the that's the honestly that's what I was doing, and that was the best way to listen to it. Just go into it and just enjoy it. Just fully enjoy it. There's gonna be a lot coming at you with it, but trust me, the more you just let it happen the more enjoyable you're going to end up having an experience with it. And you're going to be like, shit, I see your Raptors live now. Um, So how are we getting over the UK, everybody? Because we got to go see this live. Like, again, no. Do it. Do it now. All we'll get a group, group ticket. All of you. Just come, come on over. We'll put you up. So <laughs> or, or or just a, we'll buy a boat and we'll just come over there. Just like, we'll buy like a shipping boat. Also, it's like, yeah, it might take us a couple of days to get over there. But, you know, maybe... Just live in one of those like cargo containers. Maybe it's a cheap ticket. Might have to bring our own food. It'll be like camping. Get a pirate yeah. ship. Let's go back around. <laughs> if you guys see me show up in a replica of the Black Pearl blasting the Pirates of the Caribbean theme, then, <laughs> then, oh, some, then, the then someone owes me some, the world. If that happens, someone owes me some gin. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you yeah, all the yeah. gin. We'll, we'll get you a crater full of gin. <sighs> <laughs> now you're seeking my language. Well, Simon, Matt, as we bring this podcast to its conclusion, one thing I like to do is give my guests, which is you two guys, a chance to say whatever you want to say. Plug whatever you want to plug. Promote whatever you want to promote at the end of the podcast. So, gentlemen, the floor is yours. 
Dudes, and dudettes, it's uh, the 24th of June, Living Without Death's Permission, we'll be going live everywhere, it's available to pre-order now, um, check our socials, it's RxPTRS, and that is on everything, RxPTS.com, Insta, TikTok, Facebook, everywhere. whatever your chosen poison is, yeah, um, yeah hit us up there. Uh, pre-order it and if not then we'll see you on the 24th of june yeah we've got some sick colored vinyls they're looking mint we're gonna get some merch coming out it's gonna all be awesome yeah everyone in america in the u.s there's actually exclusive merch already available just That's for right. you guys as well so that is um a on the Metal Blade records um site so yeah that's just for you guys that's right Ooh, well, I mean, you're saying exclusive so merch, seeing colored vinyls. I'm pretty sure my my record player over here is like, feed me. Oh, it's looking ready for the taking. It's 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 looking hungry. It needs more. Need more <laughs> vinyl. <laughs> well, now it's time for me to close out the podcast with three very specific things. So first things first, for everyone listening, watching on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, you can already see at the bottom of the video that's going to say, you know, Raptor. Living Without Death's Permission out on June 24th. And you heard where to find them. You heard where to buy the merch. You heard that you can pre-order it. You can pre-save. You can do all that kind of stuff. You're going to want to follow along with them online so you know what's going on with them. You know when they're going to be playing shows near you. And the last thing you want to do is have to search all this stuff up and like go through the rigmarole of that. So let me go through all of that for you. Look at the description of the podcast. They find Raptors online. Links and labels for everything. Socials, YouTube, where you can stream music, buy the music, download the music, pre-order it where you can get the merch where you can get all that stuff and stay connected with them is all there so you have to do is click on the links and then go to those places follow them subscribe to them listen pre-save pre-order pre everything like that so i'm doing all the work for you <laughs> don't make my work worth nothing don't 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 you know just leave me hanging on that one now it's time for number two so guys whenever i have guests in the podcast that I enjoy having on this podcast. I tend to make a certain promise as both a thank you and the fact that, you know, I want to keep supporting you guys anyway as possible. So this kind of helps in that. So here's my promise that I like to make. It's happened hundred percent of the time. And you gentlemen have kept this promise rolling. Like this streak has continued to go on. So the promise is not if, if implies possibility of not happening. Nah, 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 fuck that. This starts with when, because implies it's going to happen, but where T date time. Yeah. We don't fucking know yet. But when I get to see you guys perform live for the first time, whether it's over here, whether it's over the UK or somewhere else around the world, doesn't matter where it is. My promise to you guys is this. First round's on me. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. my, my. Second round's on us. Yeah, exactly. That's uh, It's, it's going to be a dangerous cycle to get into. It's going to be a dangerous cycle, but hey, we'll, we'll, we'll do it this way. Jinde! Jinde! <laughs> Yes. We'll do Jinde. Alrighty. So Simon Matt, as we bring this podcast to its full conclusion, my number three thing is I cannot end this by saying goodbye for a number of reasons. One, that is way too final. I it feels like that'd be the last time this ever would happen. Hell no. Two, I gotta make good on that promise. I gotta see you perform live and first round's gotta be on me for Jinde. And number three in the future, would I like to have you guys back in the podcast? Uh yeah. So oh, hell yeah. We're gonna make that happen. So it can't be goodbye. No, 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 guys. We're going to end it with, see you later. See you, see you later, later, my man. Well, folks, I'm going to interview with Simon and Matt from the band Raptors. Once again, if you want to find Raptors online and get ready for the release of Living Without Death's Permission on June 24th, best way to do is go to the description of the podcast under Find Raptors Online. You can connect them on social media, follow, subscribe, share all their stuff. You can watch the videos on YouTube. You can also go and check out their merch. You can pre-order the album. You can pre-save the album. You can you know get ready to download the the album stream whatever songs they have out there now sorry i burped a little bit but what better way to get into raptors than doing that and i did all the work for you all you gotta do is click the link and go there and also you know follow along with the corporate Russian podcast we're on facebook twitter instagram tiktok we ooh, my food's ready we also are on other platforms like you can watch the podcast on youtube subscribe to our youtube channel and get, well watch all these crazy podcasts you can also listen audio wise five out podcast i heard radio and amazon all links are in the description there so give us a follow give us a like tell your friends about us if you're already subscribed to us i want to say thank you if you're not well what and now you're subscribed welcome to the family if you're not subscribed go hit that button please very nice please i also want to thank our sponsors phoenix system cuffs phoenix fitness not phoenix funness 
Phoenix Fitness and Custom Debuts. Links in promo code description of the podcast below. Also, check out when we were Hungry Festival. Yes, we are sponsoring it. So, meet us in Vegas, October 20th and 21st. Pancakes in the pit, baby. So, yes, check out Raptors. Living Without Desperation is just a lot of manic fun. I'm not going to lie. I really enjoyed going through this album. Really enjoyed talking with the guys. Really enjoyed talking with Simon. Really enjoyed talking with Matt. Can't wait for Pirates and Jinda! You want to get to see him perform live for the first time. So on that note, that's going to be from you guys here. Watch this to the Chord Progression Podcast. My name is Kevin, and you guys know how I end every single one of the big, healthy, and hearty. See y'all!